Golden State Media Concepts Baseball Podcast. We cover everything major league from spring training to the World Series. We've got your favorite club covered from New York to Boston to LA. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Baseball Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to the Golden State Media Concepts Baseball Podcast, where we discuss everything in the world of baseball. As always, I am one of your hosts, Ben. And, of course, you can't forget about me. I'm the other host, Jeremiah. I could never forget about you, my friend. So we have a lot of great content scheduled for both episodes today. We're going to be recording our first one here, talking about first and foremost, Tim Tebow, a.k.a. Tim T-Ball, as we call him here on the show. He has found a new home, and I know it's kind of old news, but of course, this is it's the baseball been, it's podcast. It's been a week. <laughs> it was literally on Thursday, Thursday morning when this <laughs> yeah, broke. No. Yeah, the day after we recorded our two shows. You know what I mean? So, But we still have to talk about it on the show, break down exactly what happened, and then we're going to be talking some other great stuff as well. So we're talking about the National League, talking a lot about the Dodgers cruising right now in the NL West. They have Clayton Kershaw back. He had his first start last week on Friday against the Marlins. You know, it didn't do too well, but he will have another start tonight against the New York Yankees, who are doing quite some good things in their own right. And then talking other great stuff as well, you know, Kyle Hendricks of the Cubs had a no-hitter going into the eighth inning. Unfortunately, did not get it done, but still definitely doing quite well for the Cubs. Talking about here on the show, is he a possible Cy Young candidate? I would say yes, but we're going to break it down later in the show. So first, Jeremiah, we're going to be leading off talking Tim Tebow. Yes. Tim Tebow, a.k.a. Tim Tebow, has signed right. with the New York Mets. A minor league contract, that is. Yes, he will be He will be starting off his uh, professional baseball career in the Fall Instructional League. That starts September 19th, so a little less than a week from now in Florida. The Mets general manager, Sandy Alderson, insisted that signing Tebow is not a publicity stunt. He goes, while I and the organization think are mindful of the novel nature of this situation, this decision was strictly driven by baseball. This is what he said in a conference call with Tebow and his agent Brody Van Wagenen on Thursday to announce the agreement. This was also you know, Thursday, right in the morning. So it includes a $100,000 signing bonus. He says, this was not something that was driven by marketing considerations or anything of the sort. We are extremely intrigued with the potential that Tim has. So, Jeremiah, obviously, I'm sure they are sort of intrigued by some of the potential he has on the field. But come on, you can't really convince me this is solely 100% about him, the baseball player, and not him, the publicity. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can't it, really convince me on that. Yeah, and uh, before he even signed with the team, I even said, you know, it's going to be more than a baseball move. Okay, because you can't, I'm not buying that. I'm sorry, I just can't buy that as a baseball move. He hasn't played baseball since high school. And he did, he did have an average. He looked average in his workout, according to some scouts. So I, I'm not buying that it's a baseball move because of that reason. But I'm not gonna disregard Tebow. You know, he can. Not everyone, you know, can play baseball. And the fact that he signed a minor league contract, congratulations on him. He has time to improve in the minors. But you know, he is in New York. New York media, this is a story they're going to love. Story and, they're going to love. And he's obviously very familiar with the New York media being a member of the Jets. The football so, team, that is. <laughs> right. Yeah. So he knows how to he knows how to handle the New York media and sort of take some of the the criticism and be in the limelight there in New York. He has handled that before, been there before. So I don't think he'll struggle with that. And I don't think really he'll get much publicity in this. You know, he's he's in the fall or instructional league. He's in the minor leagues. Maybe you'll see highlights if he does something great. But other than that, I don't think you'll see much on Tim Tebow unless he does get called up. You know, which to the, I think to the will bigs. be a while. Which who knows? It may even not happen. I really don't think Tim Tebow is a major leaguer. No. Could he be a minor leaguer? Yeah, absolutely. We talked about it last week when there were teams interested in Tebow, like the Braves and the Rockies. 
that Tim Tebow could be a minor leaguer because with the minor leagues you have a few prospects really that are you're for sure that are going to be solid solid players. You don't you're not going to steal at bats. Tebow is not stealing at bats from guys who are eventually getting called up. He's stealing at bats from people who are career minor leaguers trying to maybe vie for a chance to get into there, maybe get called up with injuries, who knows. But you know, he's not stealing at bats from guys who are for sure prospects that are going to be in the bigs. You know, those guys are getting their their swings, you know. Yeah. So yeah. he's not he's not stealing really at bats. I who knows up to see how he does. Of course, we'll keep you updated here on the show. But I mean, like I said, I you can't sell me on this that there's no publicity involved at all, especially exactly. in New York. Yeah, yeah especially you can't. In New York. You can't sell me on that. No, I'm not and, buying that. I'm sorry. No way. <laughs> like, and, and obviously, what I said last week about uh, like call him up for a weekend series. Obviously, that's not going to happen. Obviously, the Mets still in contention. You know, for a wild card spot in yes. the playoffs. So you can kind of throw my sort of take last week out the window because it's definitely not going to happen. The, the Mets are in consideration. They're not going to do a silly move like that to try and like sell tickets or something. You know, may, I don't think they'll, maybe they'll fall out at the end and do it. I don't see it happening. No, definitely not. He's going to be in the instructional league in less than a week. They're going to take that very serious and he's going to try and do what he can there with the Mets. So I don't know. I, I think it's a good move. Like you said, I'm happy for Tim and hopefully we'll see what goes on from here. Yeah. And uh, getting back to his workout last August, uh, you know, his, the fielding skills, a little bit average, below average, that is. I think he had a grade of 40, which was below average. Uh, the average being 50. But I didn't get to talk about his uh, raw power in bat speed. So that's what I've really impressed the scouts here from what uh, reports that I read. And Fox Sports' is Cam Res- Rosenthal said there's eight teams in the mix. So we know one of them was the Braves, which we talked about last week. And, of course, the Mets, who signed him. So I'm really, really intrigued to see Tebow in a baseball uniform and in a baseball game. Definitely. Uh, As as far as this whole thing, there's only one thing I'm really concerned about with Tebow, and that's necessarily how serious he's taking this. So you mentioned there were eight teams reportedly interested. Reports are that of those eight teams, the only team that would continue to let him do his TV gig on the side because he is a reporter and analyst for the SEC network. He covers college football. I know you're aware of that. Yeah. But some people may not be. So he does that on the side with ESPN. Of the eight teams, the Mets were the only team that were okay with him still doing that. It's something Tebow still wants to pursue and, and do on the side. And it's it's kind of hard because you have baseball, oh, such a long season. It's going on from really April to October. Then you have spring training starting up in February. So you really only have a few months off and you have football going in right during that time starting in September. So I, I kind of question how serious he's taking this because he's still doing the TV on the side and the Mets, the only team willing to sort of be okay with that. It's like, it's like Tebow almost told them, I'm doing the TV no matter what. If you guys don't want to sign me because of that, then don't. And the Mets were like, well, it's okay. You can do it. And then uh, boom, you know, <laughs> like I'm not, I'm not sure that's what happened. I'm just kind of speculating, but it's possible. Yeah, no, and uh, the fact that he's still going to be on the SEC Network, that tells me that maybe he doesn't like baseball. Like, he's just doing it for publicity. I didn't actually know that until he just said that um, on the show right now. But if Tebow was very serious about baseball, why are you still going to do TV work? Right, he's yeah. still he's still going to be doing like you that can't, SEC you Network. Can't, you can't do both, especially if you're getting paid to be on TV. You can't do it. Right, like I, I can yeah. understand there there are athletes who like Alex Rodriguez last year covered the postseason on Fox. But his season was done. Exactly, yeah. season's out of it. You know, obviously they're in the off season. He's not going to be doing this while he's in the off season. You know, he's going to be missing, you know, multiple days every now and then during the instructional league to cover TV. Think about on the weekends. You know, Friday, Saturday, Saturday Sundays. Saturday those are big. Is a big day. Yeah, those are big with college football. You have pre pre shows, you have day shows, and then post game shows. So those are big on those three days. So how can you sort of be really serious about this baseball thing and still do other things on the side that are going to take away from me? And I, th- I just find that kind of kind of puzzling and kind of worrisome. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, if Tebow is going to eventually get promoted to the minors, most people expect him to be promoted to the double A team and being Hamilton or Hampton. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right because of his age. So when he's if he's still working for SEC Network, you know, next year around August, which is the time when college football 
is starting to get more attention and he's still playing in the minor leagues. I don't know. I think that might actually boost a problem for the Mets organization because, you know, you're obligated to your time with ESPN during August and September and the fall, honestly, for that matter, which is probably the time when the minor league season is going winding down. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if Double A has playoffs. Um, actually, you know what? Yeah, they do. And the playoffs are around September, too, so which is huge time for minor league baseball. And plus, you know, they got September call-ups, too. So I just don't see this, you know, gelling together. And it could bo- boost some problems, maybe with ESPN organizations working for and the New York Mets. And I could even see some problems with his teammates. Like That too. I'm yeah. taking this so serious. I'm working my hardest. I'm trying to be the best I can to get into the show. And you're over here when while we're here seven days a week, you're here four because you're leaving three days a week to go talk yeah, about he's football a part, on he's TV. A, he's a part-time baseball player. You can't be part-time in, when you're a professional athlete. Yeah, so I, th- I think he's definitely not taking this as serious as I would. I kind of was surprised at that, but then again, I'm not because that is Tim Tebow. He's still going to try and do what he can. He has been somewhat accused at times by the media of being a publicity stunt, you know, just trying to put his name out there. And who knows? We'll have to see if his play can back it up or not. But I'm just worrisome that he's not taking it completely serious. And I think that's definitely a bad move for Tebow. And I think a bad move for the Mets. You're talking about how you are signing Tim Tebow purely as the baseball player, but you're not sort of devoting all the the time and attention to him being a baseball player you letting him do things on the outside that that kind of makes me think are you sure this is really what your intentions are because it doesn't seem like that yeah and then the, the fact that they're laying tebow you know doing his obligations for you know the sec network like i'm not sure if the mets are actually totally sold on him as a player if they're gonna let him do that maybe that kind of that kind of uh makes me wonder why Maybe this is a publicity stunt from the Mets. I don't know why they're even doing that because they're actually in wild card contention. I don't understand that. And I still think Tim Tebow belongs in the NFL, but that's all I can pretty much say about this. You know, I just I, I just think this is a publicity stunt from Tim Tebow and the New York Mets because if you're letting Tim Tebow still do work on ESPN, I don't think you really sold on him as a baseball player. That's just, that's just what I see. I, I got to agree with you, buddy. I mean, it, it's definitely something that is kind of having me scratch my head. So I, I definitely agree with you. It, it's possible. We'll have to see how Tebow does in structural leagues five days away. I mean, if there's any big storylines coming out of that, as far as Tebow, we will always keep you updated here on the Golden State Media Concepts Baseball Podcast because, after all, it is Tim Tebow, and we do love talking about him, even when he was in college and in the NFL. So... Always got to keep you updated here. All things baseball. All with, things. Tim Tebow. <laughs> that's right. But with that being said, we're going to take our first break here at the Golden State Me Concepts Baseball Podcast. Coming out of the break, we'll be talking about Clayton Kershaw and the Dodgers. And they're winding down the season here, just trying to hold off the Giants for that NOS crown. So we'll be right back here at the Golden State Media Concepts Baseball Podcast. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Baseball Podcast. And now we're going to switch gears to the Los Angeles Dodgers. They got they got the guy back. They got the big guy back, their ace, Clayton Kershaw. He came back Friday, only pitched three innings. And they lost to the Miami Marlins, who at the time were kind of in contention. They're not in contention now, but they lost 4-1 to in Miami. 
Yeah, the uh, the Marlins have sort of faltered. They are five games back of a wild card spot now, which we kind of predicted when Giancarlo Stanton went out. So a few weeks back, but yeah, Kershaw. There were reports on Friday that he was going to throw between sixty and seventy pitches. He ended up throwing sixty six, so right there on that pitch count. But he didn't. He didn't really look too good. You know, he mentioned only threw three innings. He gave up five hits, two runs. He did strike out five. He didn't walk anybody, which is pretty characteristic of Kershaw. So you would have liked him to go a lot longer than three innings, throwing 66 pitches. But he got, I, w- I wouldn't say lit up, but he got kind of hit, kind of yeah, hit pretty rough. He allowed, yeah, he did. He did. He did allow five hits in three innings. Um, you know, he did allow a home run in the first inning as well. And he just got outpitched by Jose Fernandez, who just had 14 strikeouts. He had, that's a, I think that was a franchise record that Jose Fernandez had on Friday. He was just phenomenal. On Friday night, yeah, I mean, he, he he's such a great pitcher. Yeah. It's it's not like Clayton Kershaw went in there against, you know, a September call up or the the fifth guy in the rotation. He went up against a legit yeah. National <laughs> League ace. Yeah, so legit. it didn't get any easier. But you know, sometimes you kind of just have to roll with the punches and realize, kind of tip your cap and say, you know, you played a guy who who is unhittable at times. You know, Jose Fernandez is de- definitely very capable of that. We've all seen that. Such a great strikeout pitcher as well. So Clayton Kershaw didn't do too well. But, you know, it was just his first start back. He is going to be pitching again tonight against the New York Yankees in Yankee Stadium. It's going to be Kershaw's first time there, interleague matchup, so he doesn't have to worry about hitting as well, which is definitely a plus, can avoid one more chance of getting injured, can kind of take a rest when he's not pitching. So I think that definitely helps Kershaw a little bit. I felt like when you go up there and have to hit sometimes, it might mess up your sort of momentum a little bit if you're having to wait a little long or take pitches you don't necessarily want to you want to just get back and pitching well if you're doing well so i feel like times that kind of messes you up so not having to do that when you're pitching is obviously a great thing in the american league ballpark yeah and uh this is actually a huge game for the yankees too so they're back in the wild card race in american league i don't know how but we're gonna actually talk about that in our next episode because we don't have time on this one but yeah this is a huge game huge game for the dodgers and the Yankees and I do expect Clayton Kershaw to pitch at least maybe five innings I don't see him going deep in the game probably until the playoffs start because the Dodgers I think they're going to win a National League West I just I can't see the Giants winning anymore after last night's loss to the Padres allowing four runs in ninth inning I just can't see it happen anymore yeah I mean can't see it happen the Giants you know obviously Santiago Casillas really struggled a lot they they bring in the Hunter. bullpen the whole bullpen right and then they they bring in Hunter Strickland to be that new closer role he had a four out save the other night and then last night just kind of kind of just pulled a Santiago Casillas and kind of blew a save <laughs> kind of blew it up there so the, the Giants have lost 12 games when they were ahead in the ninth inning that's yeah that is, that is that is you can't do that if you're going to make. You can't do that if you're going to make the playoffs. No, not yeah. absolutely even if, not. Honestly, if the do, even if the Giants do get in, I don't see them doing anything. Yeah, they're only half a game ahead right now of the Cardinals for that wild card spot. So, I mean, I, it's hard to say. I mean, that I think that's going to come down to the wire. I gotta like the Cardinals' leadership and experience. They've been the model of consistency. I've I've said that many times on this show. The Mets are still in there right now. Noah Syndergaard's pitching really well. I got to say the Cardinals get in for sure. And then I think it goes between the Mets and the Giants. And right now, I just really have more faith in the Mets because the Giants have been so bad. The worst team in baseball since the All-Star break. I got to say that I have more faith in the Mets right now than the Giants. And remember, the Mets were in the World Series last year too. Right, right. So, I mean, but it's still, even with how bad the Giants are playing, they still have a a shot. You know, they still have a a lot of important games. They still have five games left against the Dodgers and the Dodgers have a four game lead in the in the division right now so it still could come down to the wire. Yeah, we're going to get Kershaw and Bumgarner twice I think in those remaining games between the Dodgers and Giants. I can't wait for those two matchups. But anyway, getting back to the Dodgers here. Yeah, I honestly think that they are going to win the National League West because they're just getting a lot of production from pretty much everyone there. Yeah, yeah, look at the one name that pops out to me is Rich Hill. Since yes. he came over in that trade, he's pitched 19 innings. He hasn't even given up a run. Yeah, and he had no hitter going on the other day, and he got even though he got pulled from the game, he. How would that make you feel if you were? On I know I don't, man. If I if I'm in the midst of a no hitter and they pull me aside, 
I would be begging my coach to stay in the game. I don't care if my arm falls off, right? I'm trying to help my team win the game. But but wouldn't it wouldn't the best thing to help your team win the game if you're tired or you know the the manager sees a better matchup? Wouldn't that be the best thing to come out then? No, me I, mean, I don't I, I don't get tired yeah, I don't but... get tired man I'm like Kevin Gates I'm kidding but no but I do understand why they took him out because Richard is older he's a uh, 36 he has you know had problems with uh, he's been struggling with injuries this year so I understand why they brought him out. Which is understandable, and then they're in a. They might need Rich Hill in the postseason too. You know, he's going to be a very significant part of this rotation in the postseason. So I do understand why they took him out, pull him out of the no hitter. But yeah, man, I'm loving what I'm seeing from the Dodgers. They're getting production from the rotation after the slate of injuries outside of Kershaw and the pitching rotation. I just love the production. You know, the resiliency that the this team is showing. The bats have awaken from guys that we haven't seen like Grandall has like I think like close to 25 home runs Jock Peterson has improved plate discipline Coy Seager playing probably going to win rookie of the year I think it's a given I think I think he's probably going to win rookie of the year he looks like he looks like a veteran out there Adrian Gonzalez is playing good as well y'all saw Puig He's, he's playing good since he's he got even, caught up. He's even getting caught yeah. up, and he's playing exceptionally well. Exactly. That's just another piece to add to the to the puzzle. I think with Kershaw, I think tonight will sort of tell me a lot. Because yeah, his first will. start back, I didn't really expect much. Pitched three innings, only 66 pitches. I think tonight, I think they still maybe limit him a little bit. Maybe from 60 pitches, maybe they go to 80. Mm -hmm. You know, And then yeah. I think by his next start, which is slated to go against Madison Bumgarner as it is, stands right now against the Giants. We'll have to see if injuries happen or something happens. But I think then he'll sort of be unleashed. You know, they'll kind of take the handcuffs off. We'll have to wait and see. Who knows? I mean, watch him have a no-hitter tonight and he throws 120 <laughs> pitches. So. I know, right? But I don't know. I, I would expect maybe like 80 pitches at the Yeah, max. I do so too. I, I think I, it kind of goes by game flow though. Yeah, like I said earlier, I – Expect Kershaw to pitch only probably five innings, uh, six innings the most. I would be shocked if he pitches deep in the game. I would be deeply yeah, shocked. Too. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. So, I mean, obviously, they're playing Yankees tonight. A big game for both sides. Uh, we're talking about the Yankees in our next show. Sort of the resurgence of them and re really battling, you know, only two two games out of a wild card spot tied with the Tigers right now. So, I mean, that AL East, that's it's, it's got to be the best division in baseball. <laughs> it right? is. It is. Honestly, the most competitive and best division in all baseball. Yeah, and we will be talking about that on the next episode of the show here, as well as some other great news as well. But with that being said, we're going to take our final break here, Jeremiah, and then we're going to be talking about Kyle Hendricks of the Cubs and really the Cubs in general having a monster year. They're only three games away from clinching a yeah. playoff spot. Their, number, their magic number is three. We're in the middle of September. It, 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 it could have been one, but they, but they lost, lost last night. The they lost last night, night. yeah. So we'll be talking about Kyle Hendricks and the Cubs right after the break. So don't you guys go anywhere here at the Golden State Media Concepts Baseball Podcast. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. And welcome back into the Golden State Media Concepts Baseball Podcast. We have one game currently going on. We have the Tampa Bay Rays taking on the Toronto Blue Jays. That game is in the bottom of the first inning. And the Blue Jays not wasting any time. Already scoring a run. We have an RBI single from Edwin Encarnacion. Think about the year he's having. This is his 116th RBI so far. Wow, 116th. He's having a monstrous yeah. offensive season. And the Blue Jays, really, really, really really important that they win this game against the, the Rays, a game they should win quite handily. You know, not having the best week, 3-7 and seven within the last 10 games. The Red Sox doing quite well in the AL East right now, currently have the lead on the division. The Blue Jays are two games back. So the Blue Jays really need a win here against the Rays. Yeah, they do. But the team... 
has been doing really well. A team that's definitely uh, not needing a win, just not needing to absolutely collapse. Yeah, exactly. I would be shocked if this team collapsed. This is my probably my favorite, hands down favorite to win the World Series. That's just that's Chicago Agreed. Cubs. I definitely agree. Yeah. And one one sort of key aspect of the Cubs is what pitching has done for them. In particular, the man who has the lowest ERA in the National League, Kyle Hendricks. Yeah. Lowest ERA in the in the majors, actually. Yeah. Kyle Hendricks. ERA of 2.03. He won his last start. He went eight innings. He only gave up the one hit. He lost it there in the ninth inning. So he gives up the home run, seven strikeouts. He's he's having a monstrous year, 15-7 and seven record. Yeah, who would have thought that Kyle Hendricks would have been a possible Cy Young candidate? Who would have thought that? The, to me, Kyle Hendricks is probably the worst starter in that rotation coming in. He is, pro- he is practically... Could be arguably the best one. That's saying a lot because, you, yeah, yeah, like you said, saying a lot. You have Arietta Lester, John Lackey's a good veteran. You know, a lot of great pitching with the Cubs. I mean, everyone knows that we were talking about him all year. So Kyle Hendricks has really been the surprise to me, though. Yeah, the star of the baseball season, breakout star that is, and I wouldn't be shocked if he won the Cy Young Award. But will he win it? I don't know. I do not know because it is tough. Honestly, it is tough. honestly, it is very tough. I think in the NL more so than the AL, you have a lot of guys who are sort of vying for it. We've talked about it here on the show. I think a lot of it depends on how the season sort of winds down and ends. In my opinion, Hendricks is the favorite, though. We mentioned he has the lowest ERA at 2.03. He has 15 wins. Arietta leads the league with 17. He has seven losses. Some some of these other guys, like Lester has four, Johnny Cueto has five, Steven Strasburg has four. But in baseball, we've gone on to see that the voters don't really care too much about what their record is. And more so, it's about some of their ERA, what they mean to the, to the team. He has a war, which is wins above replacement of 4.6. So, honestly, I'd say he's my favorite right now if the season were to end. I I honestly agree with you because... Kyle Hendricks, the way he has pitched this season, it is phenomenal. And don't get me wrong. There's like Max Scherzer. He's probably the second favorite to win it. He's having a monster year. He's leading the league in strikeouts. He has 251. The guy that has the second best amount of strikeouts is Jose Fernandez with 238. So there's a huge gap there. Huge gap. Yeah, 13. But Kyle Hendricks. The reason why I think he will win the Cy Young Award in the National League, he means so much to that rotation. And that's saying a lot because this is a rotation with Arietta, John Lester, who John Lester was the big free agent signing two years ago. Arietta had a breakout season. So Kyle Hendricks is pretty much this year's Jake Arietta. Because remember, Arietta was a breakout star last year, especially with the no hitter. Hendricks. Three outs away from a no-hitter, but every time he's on that mound, he is just dominant. He, I I can't remember one a bad start he has had in a while. It's been a while since he's had a bad start. Yeah, I mean, I think really a lot of it has to, has to do with the team in general. Think about every starter for the Cubs. You know, Lester has, seven, has 16 wins. I'm sorry. Arietta has 17. You have 15 with, with Kendricks. I mean, I think really just a lot of it is because of how good that team is. I think that might be the one thing that hurts him is because the team is so good, you kind of expect everyone to do good. He has come out of nowhere, flown under the radar. I I think that definitely sort of will go into his his benefit there. Think about this. like You could have the Cubs with back-to-back Cy Young Award winners, first-timers, and not the same player. Exactly. You know I mean? that, that's that, amazing. I think that talks a lot about the organization and sort of how they run things. You know exactly. What I mean? do you, just just do a good organization. Theo Epstein deserves manager of the year because of that. He's, he has built this team so well from the farm system to the big league roster. He built it so well. And the thing I want to point out about Kyle Hendricks is the most amount of earned runs he has allowed this year is four which was April 20th. That was a long time ago. Yeah, that's one of his first long few time starts. ago. May 17th, four. Long time ago. But as the summer rolled on, he has not allowed more than three since May 17th. And then since August, he hasn't allowed more than two earned runs in a game. More than two since August. So he is pitching hot at the right time. 
Exactly. That's that's the one thing I think that really goes in pitcher's beneficiary. Think about let think about Arietta with his second half last year. Is that you have guys who you kind of have like the motto "strike while the iron's hot." You have the guys playing the best at the right time. Think about this, okay? His last his last loss, his last decision lost, was against the White Sox. That was two months ago. <laughs> yeah. so he hasn't had a decision loss since then. He's won every start except for two. He's lowered his ERA every single start. He he's playing great at the right time. You gotta yeah. just kind of tip your hat to him. And uh, I know I said something about his August and September stats, but July, July he went round four straight starts without allowing an earned run. His last start in July against the Chicago White Sox, he allowed three earned runs. This is his last loss. That was his last loss. Right. That's, but before that's that, what I'm saying. Yeah. before that, he didn't allow an earned run at all. So it, it he, he's playing. It's great. amazing. It's he's, amazing what he has done. He's playing great, and along with the Cubs, you know, we mentioned before the break, you know, their magic number to clinch is three, which already in the middle of September, and it could go to one. They're playing, they're playing the Cardinals in just about you know fifteen. I'm I'm not sorry, fifteen forty five minutes from now. So, and John Lester's on the mound, definitely a, a good pitcher, a guy who's even. In Cy Young, Cy Young contention as I well. I know they so. got three guys that can easily win the Cy Young. That is unheard of. Wow! But exactly. a question I want to ask you, Ben. Okay. And then the the listeners out there is who starts Game One of the playoffs for the Cubs if their if the, the rotation NL, is set? And, you know, if they the, don't have yeah. like people coming in. Oh, of the of the NLDS, how you who is going to pitch the first game to the fourth game? Like it honestly though, they have the luxury to pitch anyone in any game. That's how good this rotation is. Right. Kyle, I can see Kyle Hendricks just honestly starting game one and an NLDS. I guess I guess if everybody's, you know, healthy, everybody's on five days rest, I think you gotta go Arietta. He's lit, he's still the ace of your staff. He leads the league, the National League in wins. I'd probably go Arietta, Lester, Hamill, and then you I mean you could even rotate those three guys on three days rest if they're comfortable. But if not, you can even Throw in Kyle Hendricks. I mean, not sorry, Hamill. I mean, Kyle Hendricks as my third starter. I was like, Hamill so I was, the three no, I was gonna say Hamill is the fourth guy. So you have, you have Arietta, Lester, and then Hendricks. You can even just keep those three on three days rest. What if about John Lackey? I I think Lackey maybe comes in as maybe a long reliever. It's it's popular in baseball playoffs that you really only have four starters, sort of working on short days rest. They have a lot of days in between games too, so you can maybe go with just four. I think Lackey. Definitely would be the fifth starter in my eyes, or maybe just a long reliever, someone who comes out of the bullpen. But I mean, I would go with Arietta, Lester, Hendricks, not Hamill, and then I'd go Hamill fourth. So okay. that's how I would set it up. But all all five of the guys are very capable all of starting it. Even John Lackey, we're talking about him as the fifth starter. This is a guy with so much playoff experience. This is, this is not so pretty much the moment's not going to get the best of John Lackey. So pretty much the Cubs have the best fifth starter in the league. Wow. I, I got I gotta say, yes. So I mean, they, I, I think this, they have the best of how, everything. This is how I would do. I would do Arietta Hendricks, Lester, and then Hamill. Okay. I, I would split Arietta and Lester with Kyle Hendricks. And that just I would do that because honestly though. I couldn't see the Cubs pitching Hendricks in Game One of the NLDS. I mean, I it, can it's honestly, possible. I can honestly see that because having Arietta pitch in Game Two, it is they have the luxury of putting anyone in any game. That has that's how good that rotation is. I'm not saying Hamill should pitch Game One, but you know Hamill can easily pitch Game Three. He's definitely going to pitch Game Four. For that matter. Yeah, I agree. I think they'll probably go with four starters. I mean, a lot of it depends on if they can sort of get the rotation set up prior, if, which if they clinch, and they should clinch the best record this, in the they, league. Honestly, so this, I think they'll probably do that. They'll probably have maybe call some up, call some guys up to make a start, give someone an extra day off to sort of get their, you know, their rest back and get them into the f- rotation they want for the postseason. So we'll have to wait and see. But I don't expect that to happen. Yeah, and uh, they should be able to clinch the National League Central this week. And um, I do think they're going to bring some guys to start. They're going to have to probably give guys some rest and rotation. Um, but, yeah, you know, I'm really liking what I'm seeing from this rotation. And uh, they're going to get 100 wins by the end of the year. I I don't know if they're going to have the most amount of wins ever. Uh, I don't think they can. Mathematically, they can. 
I, I really don't think so. I, but I think they, they are going to get 100. They are going to get 100 wins. I, I, I think you got to yeah. stay there. Unless they yeah. sort of collapse. I think they're going to. But I would be shocked if they collapse. I would be shocked. No with, way. I mean. with, the, with the rotation they have and then the two MVP candidates and the uh, Chris Bryant and Anthony Rizzo, I would be shocked if this team collapsed at all. This team is pretty much – pretty much – they – they're going to do good <laughs> to I mean, the postseason. Yeah, I, 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 don't I don't know what else to say it. about this team. So. I don't see it happening either. I think a lot about the Cubs. I think about the organization, how sort of Joe Madden sort of changed the atmosphere, the landscape. I think he's one of the best managers in baseball. I kind of compare Very him. Very underrated. I kind of compare underrated. him to like one of one of the juggernauts of other sports coaches, managers, whatever you want to say. He just sort of finds ways to get the best out of players. Like, like this, for example. He's Jason Hamill, Kyle Hendricks, John Lackey. Guys that you would never thought would be where they are, they're they're having them play a lot better. I think a lot of that is because of coaching. You know what I mean? And the, I think the Cubs probably have the best coaching staff in baseball. So, I mean, we'll have to wait and see. I think anything except a World Series win is definitely a letdown for the Cubs. And uh, as always, we're going to update you as the playoffs start rolling on. We have just a few weeks left of the regular yeah, season. Man. Then we can finally talk about playoff baseball, which is always great. Always great to watch, too. So, Unfortunately, I think this is going to conclude this episode, though. Yeah, it was that was good. Good discussion. And something before we end, I just want to point out, the Cubs also have the best bullpen in baseball. Yeah, in my I opinion. Mean, so a lot of great arms in that in that pen they can sort of bring in if one of these starters doesn't go the complete game, which is possible anytime. But <laughs> I mean, yeah. so that's going to conclude this week's episode. We have another one we're going to talk about right after we're done here, talking a lot of great things, talking about the Yankees. They're battling in the in the wild card. Even I mean, we rolled still this, in the AL East. We rolled, we rolled this team off. Wow, we rolled I mean, them off. They're still technically battling the AL East. They're only four games out of the yeah. division lead after everything they did at the All Star break. Everything they did with the trade deadline. I mean, it's crazy to think, but we can still <laughs> be talking about the Yankees in the postseason. I don't, I don't think it'll happen, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. So yeah, we're talking we're about some other great stuff as well. Jeremiah, where can they find these shows? You can find us on a variety of platforms. You know, Google Play iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, SoundCloud. You can also follow us on YouTube at GSMC underscore baseball. And you can also follow us on Instagram at the same handle that is at GSMC underscore baseball. You can also like us on Facebook, people, at the Golden State Media Concepts Baseball Podcast. And most importantly, it's free, folks. Go ahead. Absolutely free. No charge at all. So there's no reason you can't be listening. We're here every Wednesday recording two shows. So... I like to be here a lot more often, but you know, time is. What well, we you can, are, so. you are here a lot more. Well, often. Well, for the baseball oh, show, for a ba- I mean. okay. So, a week's a long time. You know, we is. have games every day. I know. So, it's like- but it, it is what it is. Definitely not going to complain at all. Definitely fortunate for everything we are doing here, and uh, definitely fortunate to record here with my buddy Jeremiah. Yeah, and don't forget uh, our website at gsmcpodcast.com. And if you can't get enough of Ben and I, we also do the GSMC. Football podcast every Friday. Yeah, you and I do it on Friday. Yeah. You do it with Alex every other day. And then I do the sports show with Alex every other day and soccer on Monday. So we're definitely really busy here at the studio. Definitely here. Uh, you're here every single day, Jeremiah. During I am. The week. So I am. Yes. Just cranking them out. So with that being said, that is going to conclude this episode. I am your one of your hosts, Ben. And I'm the other host, Jeremiah. And we will be back with another episode so don't you guys worry. You got another at least half hour to listen to us. And then we'll be back next week talking everything baseball as well. So with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed. And I am signing off here at the Baseball Podcast. Have a good day.